From the Oklahoma Newsroom, it's time for the Energy FC Weekly Update. I'm here with the coach, Steve Cook. Coach, it's a, it's an off week, so you're solo this week, giving everybody else an off week, I guess. Yeah, it's an off week for, for the fans. They don't get to come to a home game, but for the players and, and the staff, we're working hard still and trying to really prepare for what is going to be another uh, tough stretch of games. So we're, we're back to work and, and really enjoying it. Yeah, you got a couple games next week, and we'll talk about those in a second. But we'd be remiss if we didn't rewind a second to last weekend, Saturday's match uh, against L.A. It was kind of quiet, if, if that, I don't know, pedestrian, I don't know what you want to call it, until the very end. Then it was anything but, right? It was a pretty tight affair, you know, and I think we, we did quite well with the ball without really causing LA too many problems, didn't really penetrate quickly enough I felt and, and in transition I think we were a little bit too slow and a bit too conservative. But then uh, th the same would go for LA, we, we held them to very few opportunities, just shots from distance and a couple of balls into the box. But then we caught a little spark with 10 or 15 minutes to go and uh, managed to push uh, the game forwards a little bit. We got a great deal of territory and mm -hmm. fortunate enough we got a goal from a set piece. Uh, substitute Christian Valeski came on from a, a great delivery again by Philip Rasmussen. Yeah, and in the 90th minute you get that game winner. So uh, came there at the very end uh, and third straight match that Philip has had an assist on a corner kick and each of those three goals or game winners. If you get in that position, you got to feel pretty good about things, it, it seems. Yeah, Philip's been doing really well, not only uh, returning from his ACL injury, which was a, a long time out, but he's, he's really committed himself in training and he's worked extremely hard every day with his fitness and his, his general health, as well as, you know, his mentality. He's come into the group and done really well to uh, deliver those set pieces the way he has done the last few weeks. And not only that, but players be committed enough inside the penalty area to get their head on things is, is big for us. And I think anytime you get a 90th minute winner, you can see there the smiles on people's faces. It means uh, it's not just a regular goal, it's a big time goal. There were only 13 goals in franchise history in the 90th minute or later, but only one of those was a game winner. So to get that at that point, especially in a match that was, you know, so basically just a lot of uh, back and forth, I had to leave your guys with a good feeling. Yeah, it's a very balanced game. And uh, again, I think we've played better than that with the ball and mm -hmm. we, we've, we've played better than that in general and, and not quite got the, uh, the, 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 the look there. And uh, we've, we've not quite had the results sometimes. But I think this was one of those, we deserve to win the game. The guys were pushing on and on. And uh, sometimes you think it's never gonna come, but you know, the reality of the game now in 90 plus minutes, there's always an opportunity and uh, right at the death there, they got that moment and uh, it was a great, great delivery and a great finish. Well, after that rough stretch earlier in the year, now you guys have won three straight, uh, four, two and one in, in that, that stretch of games. Um, and now you do have a little bit of a break. So considering the momentum of those games, but this off week from games, how do you guys approach this, uh, this stretch before you play again next Wednesday? Yeah, I just said to the guys this morning, it's really important that they use the last few, few weeks and use the last few games in particular to be a spring board to, to take the season forwards. There's no point, you know, having a little moment of joy and success and then, then not taking it with us. So I think the task is really to be humble. Uh, don't forget those days that were a bit disappointing and really stay focused on the task at head. And for me, I think it's every single day, turn up to work, put the work in, be focused, be energetic, be a great teammate and good things will happen at some point. And uh, to be fair to the guys, they've really done that all the time and I, I couldn't be prouder of them. Well, you guys are surging here of late. You're getting ready to face next Wednesday on the road, a San Antonio team that's been pretty consistent. Yeah. Uh, when you look at their whole body of work, that's a 7.30 start down in San Antonio. Uh, what's the challenge against San Antonio on Wednesday? Yeah, I think for two years now, San Antonio have been one of the best defensive teams in the league. They don't give a lot away and certainly at home they they, they don't lose many games and they don't concede many goals and, and they're, they're a real force to be reckoned with because they have enough quality to hurt you on the counter-attack and I think they've got some real quality players in every position. I know the coach Darren Powell really well and he's, he's, a, he's a great uh, professor of the game and he's a really uh, top quality coach and he'll have his team well organized and well prepared and we go there hoping that we uh, can continue this run of form. I think hopefully we can be a threat against their, their very sturdy defense and as well we've got to be careful because they've got quality players in every position that can hurt us so uh, we go there with the same mindset, try to win the game and stay really focused and organized. You know as consistent as they've been this season and, and maybe historically this franchise won 0-5 against them so have had you know 
decent results against this team. Uh, you guys are going to be facing that tough, tough match on Wednesday, but then you got to turn around Saturday and play again at home against Colorado Springs. Is there a challenge at all to stay focused on that one with one so quickly after it? Yeah, it's a little bit like that three-game uh spin yeah. we had a week or so ago you know where we, we we played three games in six days this is three games in seven or eight days and uh, the challenge is to keep everybody healthy and fit and strong and make certain that we don't run into a, a, an epi epidemic of injuries and I think that's the big challenge for us in these little periods but you know make no mistake you know we need to win games so we need to put our best foot forwards no matter who the opponent no matter home or away we need to win games so uh, that's what we'll be trying to do and uh, hopefully if we perform in the right way we can come back with three points. Even in this off week for for games you guys are still working behind the scenes definitely uh, assigning just today uh, uh, of Atiba Harris and this is a, a quite an addition to your squad because he's got some fairly extensive uh, experience a native of St. Kitts and Nevis in the Caribbean He's a veteran of over 250 matches in MLS, uh, played with Dallas FC for three years, uh, lots, of, lots of action there. What, uh, what do you hope he brings to this squad, Steve? Yeah, you know, Atiba's a, a great human being and, and, you know, when you've played over 300 professional games and represented your country 60 plus times, you know, you've do, you're doing something really well. And uh, the one thing about Atiba, I, I knew him obviously from my days in Colorado and we had him in the group there in Colorado and he's a, he's a fantastic uh, teammate. He's somebody who every single day works extremely hard to do the best he possibly can for not only himself but the team. He really is... Uh, been an influence in all the teams he's been on. He probably has ended up playing a lot more minutes than people might have thought he would do. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's, he's going to be a great addition to this group. He's a multifunctioning player. He can play in various roles. So mm -hmm. with Atiba, not only do we bring in a very good player, but we bring in a person of the highest character and integrity. And I think the more chance we get to do that with the group, then uh, the better we're all going to be. You know, you mentioned his multidimensional talent. And he's a defender, but you mentioned the international experience, 60 matches. He scored 14 goals. Yeah. So he He's a guy that looks like he could do a lot of different things for y'all. Yeah, certainly early in his career. I mean, I remember we played in the MLS Cup final in 2010 against FC Dallas. And I remember that season, Atiba scoring some goals and been more of a, a right winger forward type player. And, and later in his career, he's moved back to right back and centre back a little bit. Mm -hmm. But he's a threat, and certainly for us, it'll be a big, big threat on set pieces. It'll be, a, it'll be an opportunity for us to defend set pieces as well very well. And he's just a really good all-round professional player, you know. So I have no doubt in my mind that he could play virtually anywhere on the field. We probably won't put him in as goalkeeper, but we'll play him everywhere <laughs> and anywhere. And I think he's going to be, again, not only a great addition on the field, but off the field, I know he's going to be a big addition to this group. You've brought guys onto the roster during the year this year several times, so this isn't anything new. But how do you feel like he'll, how quickly do you feel like he'll fold into things? And is this off week, is this stretch of no matches going to be a help to maybe get him in action quicker? Yeah, you know, let's not forget he spent quite a lot of years in Dallas, which is just a couple of hours down the street there, you know. So I think he'll uh, know about the climate here. He'll know about the conditions he comes into. Mm -hmm. He's going to bring his family with him. He's got a wonderful young family, and uh, they're, they're going to be coming in this next week to, to join the group. And I don't think, I don't have any hesitation. In, in saying that Atiba is going to be a great fit and he'll find his way and find his feet pretty quickly. For us, this, this next week is going to be a challenge. We have games, but we do need to acclimate him pretty quickly mm -hmm. um, into the group. But again, we have many, many players now who can play in these roles. So uh, over the course of the next couple of weeks, it, whether Atiba's with us or not, it, you know, I have every faith in the players to come out and put some uh, good results together. Lastly, before we go, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk a little World Cup because we're hitting the end of the group stage, about ready to to start the knockout stage. We've seen some teams advance surprisingly. We've seen some teams just they're going home surprisingly. We'll start with the fact that your favorite and a lot of people's favorite not going to be playing in the knockout stage. Germany is out. Yeah, I mean, I, I made the worst prediction of all time <laughs> in uh, saying that Germany were going to win the whole thing. I, I don't think uh, I'm on my own in that prediction. I don't think so either. Uh, and, and if you can find the person who said they'd be knocked out in the group <laughs> stage, I, I want to meet them and go down the casino with them. But um, <laughs> it is a shock that Germany are out. But I think the two teams in the group that did advance, uh, Mexico have played some wonderful soccer in that group. And Sweden, I think, uh, have been very consistent 
consistent as they always are. But I think this World Cup is not only a World Cup where we can hopefully enjoy some new teams maybe yeah. coming to rise and maybe we'll get a different winner than has ever won it before, which would be exciting and interesting. Uh, but I think literally at this point, anybody uh, could win the whole thing. And uh, obviously, my, my have a, a soft spot for England, so I hope that they come through. And yeah. But I've, I've been disappointed too many times by England, so <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not... I'm not going to put my money on them in case that they do a Germany and get knocked out. Well, Germany hasn't. The first time, the last time they hadn't advanced out of the group stage was 1938. Wow. So a lot of people were with you on it, at least expecting them to see see them move on. Considering that the defending champs are gone, do you have a favorite now? Is are there or do you just step out of that business and say, never mind, I'm not going to try to pick at this I, point? I think, given my gambling history, I'm I'm <laughs> hoping that the next team England play, that I'm going to pick them as favourites, and then it's a <laughs> <laughs> almost a certainty that England will win but I think at this point it's so wide open some teams have played great soccer early on and one or two high profile teams have struggled to make it through but make no mistake in the end uh, there's going to be somebody in there that deserves to win it it's a tough tournament to win and I think uh, you know we've got another couple of weeks of phenomenal soccer and a great sport and occasion and celebrate life throughout the world so it's going to be an amazing experience so England Belgium on Thursday you're picking Belgium right uh, well, I'm actually looking at the bracket now and thinking if England finish in second place on paper, it looks a bit easier. So tomorrow I'm not too worried who wins that game. Yeah. Uh, but then obviously then it gets uh, a little bit scary after that point. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, I'm not going to pick a favourite from here on out because I've been uh, disappointed in my selection so far. <laughs> but fingers crossed for England. All right. All right. Knockout stage starts on Saturday. A couple uh, more matches on Thursday in the uh, round in the uh, group round so uh, lots of fun left to go and again next Wednesday night energy heads to San Antonio 730 start there and then Saturday back at home against Colorado Springs also a 730 start go to energyfc.com for all the details and ticket information and be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoman